All right, folks, we're really excited here to be joined by Jorge Cervantes uh, via Skype from Barcelona, Spain. Jorge, thanks for joining us uh, in what's the evening uh, for you. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Russ. It's really good to be back here in Spain. You know, I lived here for so many years, and I've been in America a couple of years, and I, I just miss it here. It's a um, wonderful place. In the world. It's beautiful. I wish I could uh, visit sometime, and uh, who knows, maybe someday I will. Uh, Jorge, we're really excited to have you here because, of course, you've been contributing to the Normal Network with your videos from JorgeCervantes.tv, and I encourage anyone to check those out uh, at the website. And, of course, you've written so many books that people swear by as far as marijuana cultivation goes. We've got you here today because you got a new DVD out that we want to tell people about, so let's tell them about it. What's the new DVD about? Well, yeah, actually, it's, it's really pretty cool. We shot most of it. Part of it here we shot in Barcelona, hmm. actually. Um, yeah, the, the intro and the exit we shot, uh, oh, just, just up the hill over here in um, you know, Parque Hue, or uh, well, Park to most people, to me in Parque Hue. But um, anyway, the rest of it we shot in Northern California, and it's the Green Giants of Cal yeah, the Green Giants of California. Uh, can of Ventures with Jorge Cervantes. Can of Ventures, Green Giants of California. And man, I mean, you go through and see some great gardens. I'm not kidding. These gardens are A number one. Uh, one of the gardens, for example, was grown by uh, a third generation uh, grower from up there. And that's where the, the you'll see the, the 10 pound plant. Right. And we go through everything about it, you know, exactly how to grow a 10-pound plant. It's remarkable. And, of course, we're talking about a lot of, uh, especially out here on the West Coast, where we have the medical marijuana statutes that say you can only have a certain number of plants. Well, then it makes sense to try to maximize what you're going to yield from each plant. Well, that's right, you know. And, and say, if you can grow in, in California, I've, we also uh, have a home in California, in my county there, we're supposed to be able to grow six plants. Well, you can either grow six one-pound plants or six ten-pound plants. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you can make the decision yourself, you know. It takes a little bit more work, but it's not too tough. And it's not expensive at all either. You can grow this cannabis for less than $10 an ounce. Yeah. You know, I mean, way less. Yeah, that's amazing. And so uh, folks will be able to find out how to get this DVD uh, on your website and other outlets? Yeah, you can you can find it at uh, JorgeCervantes.tv, and also you'll be able to find it on Amazon.com. You can actually download it uh, live, or I mean streaming, I don't know, it's all these new terms, uh, <laughs> stream it down from uh, Amazon.com, watch it on your iPhone, uh, your iPad, or in about, a, and that should be available in the next week or so. And then, then after that, we've got them being made right now as we speak in high definition Blu-ray. Oh, so nice. and, and we shot everything in, in HD. You can blow it up as big as you want, you know, and see the plant life size. Oh, wow. great. That's going to yeah. be a great DVD. Everyone check that out at JorgeCervantes.tv, and we'll have links up at our blog at stash.normal.org. And, Jorge, you've been uh, writing about and, and, and cultivating uh, cannabis for years and years and years now. And, and of course, we've seen a, a great uh, development in people's skill and ability to cultivate cannabis plants over the decades. Uh, is there anything that's happening now new in techniques or technology that's got you really excited about cannabis cultivation? Well, as, as far as as far as far techniques, you know, I, I mean, the last 10 years, I've been really an outdoor grower. And I love growing outdoors because, number one, it's natural. It's under the sun. Uh, there's a, a few things that are really, really cool. Uh, number one, I say, are these auto-flowering feminized plants that are coming out. They've been here in Europe for the last five years, and they've been quite big. Uh, they actually originated in Poland, and it was a Canadian breeder, a joint doctor, that, that had the, uh, the uh, oh, that little one. It was about this high, super little guy, uh, <laughs> the uh, lowrider. Yeah. And uh, they got it over here in Spain, first in Switzerland and then in Spain later, 
and worked it up, and now you can get these plants in, uh, they frost them with everything. They've got the taste tasting really good. The, the resin is very high, got a high cannabinoid level. Uh, they've got them so it'll grow a meter tall. That's about 40 inches, and it'll produce at least 100 grams. 100 grams is almost four ounces per plant. The cool part is about them, you plant it say, on day one, well, 70 days later, you've got a complete a, a, a plant that's ready to harvest. That goes from seed to harvest in 70 days. Wow. And they will flower under any light regimen. You give it 24 hours of light, guaranteed to flower. Hmm. Uh, that's one of the big things. And then also just this uh, technology. I've known about big plants for years and been growing them for years. Um, but it's just uh, they're a lot more popular right now because because of the limited number limited number of plants people can grow. Uh, those are the big things. And then the other things that I'm really interested in, very excited about, uh, is the uh, uh, cannabinoid testing mm. that all of the labs in California are doing. Um, that's that's really uh, raised the level everywhere. They used to do it in Netherlands. Um, but there was really no reason to do it. Uh, there, as a matter of fact, uh, they were afraid to do it for a lot of years because they thought they would prove that the drug content was too high. Mm. Um, you know, and it was. It, well, it was awfully high. But it's really uh, sorted out a lot of things. Um, you know, people have been claiming they had 30% cannabis or uh, content of THC. That's uh, physically impossible. Uh, it can only go up to 24%. That's it, you know. Uh, and, and then also the testing, the CBDs have been a huge thing. That's uh, the cannabinol. Uh, it's the no high part of the cannabis. But uh, now, well, over at Resin Seeds and Mr. Nice Seeds, they've made a, a joint venture where they have a one-to-one -one ratio of THC and uh, CBD in their variety. So this stuff is what really, really amazes me. And as far as new products, yeah, I guess there's a bunch of those out there too. But I'm into the plants. <laughs> That's yeah. what turns me on. Well, you know, and you and there's something in your uh, description of the plants there that I thought, you know, that I caught and maybe a few other people heard, uh, your use of the word varieties rather than yeah. strains. Could you explain that to people? Because <laughs> I think they get that confused a lot. Strain. A strain is a fungus. Fungus, they are lower plants. Lower plants do not need light to survive. They do not produce chlorophyll. You find strains of bacteria as well in your body. Strains do not exist in cannabis. Um, the, the, the word's been misused for years. I went through a big, uh, uh, oh, God, the last books I've, I've written, I've used the word strains. And uh, I'll have to say it was against my better judgment. I used them because it was a popular word. And nobody had known what the hell I was talking about unless I said strain. Well, um, that's not necessary any longer. You know, I'm just, I, I'm not going to do it. Uh, uh, plants are grown out as varieties. And there are varietals. And, you know, to, to, make, to raise the whole level of the entire industry for people to take it seriously, because they damn well should. Um, we're important people, and it's an important plant that we're helping out. So we should use the proper vocabulary here. Excellent. So varieties. Um, yeah, make a note of that, everyone. It's varieties, not strains. We're speaking with Jorge Cervantes, the legendary uh, cannabis expert, and uh, he's got a new DVD out. you got to check it out. It's out at uh, JorgeCervantes.tv. Uh, you know, the books that you've written and, and the education you've given to people through DVDs and streams and so much, so forth has been invaluable to many uh, cannabis cultivators. I'm wondering if you've seen uh, not only that the best growers have gotten better, but the average level of grow knowledge has increased. Have you seen that amongst the average grower is better now than they were, you know, 10, 20 years ago? Yeah, actually, that's been a huge, a, a huge change. Uh, because before, you know, like I, I started at this publicly uh, 30 years ago. And before that, I was in the industry a good strong 10 years, maybe uh, a bit longer if you count everything. Um, and back then, nobody knew anything. It was very hard to get uh, good, clean information from people. Uh, one of the things that I remember from, well, really 30 years ago, 
was uh, they were using the china hat, they call them, or cone reflectors mm -hmm. that would have the, the bulb hanging straight down. And I asked at least 20 different uh, manufacturers, manufacturers and people that work for the manufacturer, why they were cone-shaped and, you know, what, what's the deal there? Because I used my light meter, I purchased one of them, and I said, why is it this shape? Nobody had a valid answer for me. And finally, one guy told me, he goes, well, that's because they make the materials four feet wide. And so to get the most out of the material, we make a cone hood. And I thought, that's got nothing to do with growing plants. It's got everything to do with uh, looking at the, you know, using the most of the material. Mm -hmm. So then I went to uh, to Netherlands and saw every, everybody had their lamp horizontally. But I thought, whoa, that's important. And then I talked to um, uh, Jack Pot, or Poot, you say, uh, PL uh, Lanchery Lamp. Lamp lighting, they're the first big Dutch company, and talked to, uh, talked to him, I asked him a million questions, and found out some real simple answers. He had a real simple answer. As soon as you turn a lamp sideways, half of the light's reflected and half of it's direct. It's just inherently more, uh, better. I mean, well, it's, it's more efficient. You know, that same thing has gone on and on and on throughout this entire industry. In fact, um, there's many, many examples of it today. You know, somebody will find something out that works. They keep that information to themselves, and they make money from it, and they share it with nobody. Um, I can't mention it. I just won't mention any names, but I'm always, I, I'm always turning over rocks and, <laughs> and finding <laughs> things I don't like underneath them. <laughs> Oh, Jorge, you know, we could uh, sit here all day and just pick your brain of all the uh, massive knowledge that you've accumulated, but we're unfortunately limited for time here. So I want to remind everyone, check out JorgeCervantes.tv, and you can catch replays of those videos on our uh, video block. It's at uh, 10 in the morning Pacific time, or if you're in Barcelona, Spain, it's at 7 at night. So uh, you can catch those replays. And uh, Jorge, again, give them information on the DVD, and if they want to contact you, how can they get a hold of Jorge? Hey Cervantes. Oh, you can uh, you can write me at Jorge or uh, Jorge Jorge arroba, at uh, marijuanagrowing dot com and that's marijuana with a J, not an H like we spell it here. And um, yeah, that's easy. I've got a regular email there, and and I answer my emails actually uh, fairly regularly. And then I also just got off of oh about ten minutes ago. I was on uh, called Tree. It's on that site Reddit. R-E-D-D-I-T dot com. Um, anyway, I'm going to be on there every week answering questions. And I answered, I don't know, 60, 60, 60 yeah, about 60 questions there in the last hour. I can type really fast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's another way to get a hold of me. Fantastic. And then, um, yeah, yeah. And then also, I don't know if you're over in, anybody's over in Europe often, but every year I make a point of going, going to uh, the, the spanabiz dot com. Fair. It's the biggest fair in Europe. It's a huge, huge thing. And it, it's way bigger than anything in America. It's the biggest one in the world. And then also they've got the, uh, there's another fair, Kultiva.at. Uh, That's one I try to make. That's over in Austria. And then the other fair that I uh, try to make every year is Canatrade.ch. That's uh, going to be right outside of Zurich this year in uh, uh, Switzerland. Yeah. Wow. Very exciting time for those of you out there in Europe. Check out Jorge Cervantes at all of these different events, and the information will be up there at jorgecervantes.tv. Jorge, thanks again for all you're doing and for uh, joining us here on the show. We really appreciate it. Hey, thanks so much, Russ. I'm really, really happy you invited me. Thanks again. All right.